This is David Coyle. Thank you again for joining me for Real Life Worth Living. As we pick up where we left off, still looking at Abraham and Isaac and looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20, and Genesis chapters 23 through 26, or at least elements of them. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's, told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, don't they always? And his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And that the prayer that was offered so that he would be able to identify the woman by the servant of the landholder, Abraham, was honored. And God led him not only to the household of Abraham's brethren, but to the very woman. And even before the man had finished praying his prayer of faith, praying in the will of God, praying according to the instructions of his master, God answered his prayer in such a manner that he could not possibly miss it. That even he had to understand that his master's God, had come through fully and completely as he promised he would. He kept his promises and he honored his master's promise and our instruction and brought him to the place where he could, uh, as we saw last time, an agreement was made for Rebecca to be taken by the servant back to Isaac to be his wife. And Rebecca becomes a very important element in this whole picture of faith as we shall see. The agreement was made for her to become the wife of Isaac. She went with the servant back to uh, Abraham's home and presented her to Isaac. Isaac accepted her, took her as his wife, and in just a little while, they uh, are given two sons. And in a little while, Isaac becomes the patriarch in the state of Abraham when Abraham dies and passes the mantle off to him. And then it is his responsibility to keep that blessing and that promise intact through his sons so it can be passed on through them or through one of them to a son of God's choosing, uh, as we said, on down through the steps of time until we get to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is the one who is indicated in that blessing, who is the one who is the uh, architect of that blessing, of the city of God, of the kingdom of God and the king for whom we for whom we await to establish his presence in his eternal kingdom and draw us with him into that kingdom. Uh, we have a very sketchy picture of what that kingdom will look like, how it'll operate, but at that time we'll know. For we will be present with him as the bride of the Son of God. Isaac accepted the bride that the servant brought for him to consider to be his wife. And after the agreement was made, in verse 61 of chapter 24, to the end of the chapter, we read these words. And Rebekah arose and her damsels and they rode upon the camels and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went his way. 
And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lahiroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent and took, her, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Well, as we see, her first mission was to bring comfort to the heart of Isaac, who was still mourning the death of his mother, he had come out into the field in the evening in order to meditate, that is, to spend time in fellowship and prayer with God the Father. And as he meditated there, then the answer to his prayer, the answer to Abraham's quest, the fulfillment of the journey of the servant with Rebekah, all came together it all came to fruition in this one moment, and Rebecca had said, "Who is the man who comes to, to um, who, who walks toward us to greet us?" And the servant said, "That is my master. That is Isaac. He is the son of my master Abraham, the one for whom uh, I fetched you to, to come and to be his wife." She lit from her camel, I mean she sprang off of her camel and went to meet him. And he took her to be his wife at, from that time on, and she was his wife. She was the mother of his children, and that in and of itself is a step of faith. Another miracle in the line of the women in Abraham's uh, family um, required in order to make it known, uh, in order to make sure that uh, the promise of God could be kept. And he picked impossible situations by providing the women that he did in order to make sure it is known that it is God who is fulfilling this promise. It is not a work of men. It is a work, a spiritual work of God, uh, a work that no man could possibly produce. For man is capable of producing nothing apart from God. The very best he can do is make things from what God has already made. And whether he realizes it or not, he has to depend upon God in order to complete anything in his life. Well, Isaac understood that. The servant understood that. Abraham understood that. Sarah understood that. Rebecca understood that. And so did each one in line down through the ages who walk in faith, who live in faith, who trust their lives to God's leadership, who trust their souls to the Son of God. As we said before, everyone who was ever saved was saved looking at Christ. All of those of the Old Testament believed the promises of God and believed then the prophecies of God and believed in what God promised he would give through one who was to be the sacrifice for sin. Beginning in Genesis 3.15, the promises of a sacrifice for sin began to be given. And so 
looking for the fulfillment of those promises to the future, they trusted in the Word of God and they trusted to the infallibility of the answers to those promises which were all embodied and fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So they looked forward to the cross, not knowing they were looking to a cross, but looking forward to the cross, nonetheless, they were saved. We know about the cross. We have the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ. We know about the willing submission of the Son of God who laid down his life to be the sin sacrifice for the world. That through faith, by trusting in that sin sacrifice, we become then the children of God, forgiven of our sin, washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for sin, and trusting in his return as our King, our Master, our Lord, trusting him as our Lord in this present life, filled with the Spirit of God, indwelt by the Spirit of God, filled with the Spirit of God, as long as we are confidently trusting in the Word and in the person of God. When we're in the flesh, we're not trusting. When we're not in the flesh, when we're being led by the Spirit of by the Spirit of God and the Word of God, then we are being strengthened in that spiritual man, that spiritual life that God has led us to. And then we become a blessing to God and to mankind, to one another, to each other. And uh, that's what God asks for us. That's what he wants for us. That's his plan and purpose for our lives. Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. Verse 20. Let me give it to you this way. Start with verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Those marriages required absolute faith in the power of God in order to carry out the fulfillment of the promises that God had given them, because the women were barren, and so is Rebekah, just as Sarah had been. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Same thing happened with Sarah. Now, you will notice here that he entreated for his wife that God would speak to her womb and allow her to become pregnant. There was no discourse here between the husband and wife over a period of years looking hopelessly and without trust and without faith and leaving God out of the equation where they sought to answer God's promise through the flesh, through their own actions. And, of course, God wasn't pleased in that. And God did, finally, at the right time, in the right place, for the right reason, give them a son. That son was Isaac. He was the son of promise. He was the inheritor of the blessings of God through Abraham and the one who would pass them on to his progeny. Now, we'll have to pick up here next time.